welcome back to my channel my name is Kristen and I'm the maker behind yarn theory and today I'm excited because I am sharing the first tutorial of 2022 so we will be continuing on our trend of things that are not only beginner friendly but will also keep the interest of advanced crocheters as well so today's project is a crochet bucket bag with a drawstring closure and I love it because it has a very simple construction and it really highlights the texture of a very easy stitch. So I use a regular single crochet stitch for this today's bag, but you could easily apply the waistcoat stitch or the herringbone single crochet stitch to this bag just to play around with the texture. So we'll break this tutorial into three parts. We'll fo first focus on the construction of the body, body of the bag itself. We'll then go to creating the drawstring feature that um, we will use as our closure. And then we'll work on the short strap here that we have um, last. And this is using, using the crochet eye cord technique. So don't worry if you don't know how to do this technique. I actually have a video on my channel that goes into detail on how to create the crochet eye cord. So I will post the video somewhere on the screen so you can go check it out. And then once you've watched it and got familiar with it, definitely come back and you'll be able to complete this entire bag. Before we get into our video, as always, if you like crochet and knitting content, tutorials, explanations of techniques, and just some behind the scenes things, definitely uh, subscribe. And also give this video a thumbs up just so I can get a feel or gauge for how you are enjoying the content. And in the comments below, drop some ideas or topics that you'd like to see. I'd love to hear your input. Um, it'll definitely help me as I'm creating new videos for you guys. And that's it. And now we'll get into today's tutorial. To complete this project, you will need 200 meters of three millimeter braided cotton cord, two lobster swivel clasps, two D-rings, a six millimeter crochet hook, scissors, and a tapestry needle. The purse strap is optional. So we'll start off by making the base of our bag and it's gonna be in a circle. So our goal is to make a circle that's about seven, seven and a half inches um, in diameter. And we will be working in continuous rounds. So with, at the end of each round, you'll be moving your place, your stitch marker um, to the final stitch of the round you just completed working and then you'll continue on um, as instructed. Note, I am staggering my increases every other round 
Um, so I'm slightly varying from the written instructions that you're seeing on the screen. Uh, this is optional. You can follow them as written and you will still come out with the same uh, end result. I just like to stagger my increases because it creates a smoother circle.
Okay, so we've come to the end of round nine, and now you'll begin rounds 10 through 32. I'm speeding through this part because it's very simple. I am making one single crochet stitch in each stitch around, and I will come back once I get to round 33 so I can show you how to attach your D-rings to your bag. So once you get to round 33, your bag should look like this. Um, here's our base, should measure about seven inches in diameter, and then here is the top of our bag. And so you want to fold it so that your starting point is in the center of one of the longer size of your bag. And then we'll be placing our D-rings at each of the corners, um, one D-ring on each corner. And so what you'll do is you'll single crochet into the first 13 stitches and then you'll place your D-ring over stitches 14 and 15 and you will crochet through the ring in order to attach it to your bag. So I'm going to demonstrate how to complete round 33 now.
so now we're coming to the fun part. So here I'm making the closure. I started off by making a slip knot and I am chaining six. Once I have six chains, I will join them in the round with a slip stitch. And then I will single crochet in each stitch in the round for two rounds. This is the slider part of the closure and now I'm just weaving my ends and I left a long tail because we're going to use this at the end once we join it with our actual drawstring portion of the closure. So next you want to take some more of your cord and measure out three 28 inch pieces of cord. We will use these pieces to create our braided drawstring and we will make adjustments as we go. Um, once you actually attach your cord to your bag, you may want it longer or shorter. So this part is completely customizable. Once you actually get it um, weaved into your bag, you will be able to cut this to the length that is your preference. But we'll, we'll start off for now with these three 28 inch strands. Do you ever get to a certain point in a project and you're so excited to finish that you kind of start skipping ahead to certain details and start doing things out of order? Well, that's exactly what's happening here. So, I'm just going to give a disclaimer that there's definitely an easier way or a more sensible way for me to do this particular section. So, I'm going to talk through this part a lot. Um, so, as you see here, I stop to fold the bag just so I could see how it's looking. Um, so you want to do the same thing and this is going to help you to see what where you'll be inserting your uh, drawstring once you've braided it up. So uh, what I'm doing in the video is I'm actually trying to decide where I want it to go um, and I kind of did things again in a weird order. So what I would suggest is that you first take your three pieces of cord, tie a knot on one end, and braid it down the entire length of the cord. Once you've done that, then you would need to fold your, the top of your bag in order to determine where you want to insert your cord. Once you've done that, then I would insert the cord starting at the back of my bag and then slowly weaving it in and out of each of the creases as in, depicted in the video um, in order to attach it to your bag. So here I'm just playing around with it. Um, again, I'm doing this in a very weird order so I, I apologize for that. But um, I'm going to stop for a moment to tie my knot, braid it up and then I will um, begin the process of weaving it in and out of my bag.
the drawstring and I threaded the open end um, into my tapestry needle and now I'm pulling my back up again so I can start to eyeball where I will be inserting my drawstring. So I tend to, uh, just for a general placement guide, try to place it about two rows down from the top of the bag. Um, that way it's not too close to the top and it just, it will close it up really nicely and it, it just looks really nice. So try to position it about two rows down in the back. Keep in mind that it may look like it's not exactly two rows down because your starting slash ending point is in the center of the back of the bag. Um, so keep that in mind that it may not be perfectly positioned two rows down on I think the left side of the back of the bag but around the rest of the bag two rows down is perfect so as you see here I'm going in and out of each crease and I'm flipping it back and forth as I go just to make sure it's going through how I like it um, I'm making sure to go in between stitches and not into a stitch um, that way it's much easier to pull this through it through folding up the next crease and then using my fingers to kind of search for where I want to insert that next uh, insert it next and then uh, taking my needle and pulling it through so once I get to the front here I stop to add my little slider thing to the bag again I'm clearly excited I'm doing things in a weird order but I could have actually added this detail at the very end but here I'm just adding it um, to see how it looks. And then I, again, leave it off to the side. I'm not gonna finish it just yet. So I continue weaving my drawstring in on the other side using the same technique. Folding it, eyeing it, using my fingers to help me find where I want to pull it through. And I'm gonna continue this until I get to the very back. And so what I will say about this part is that I like, I like that you can see that this is really all up to you as far as like your taste, how you want your back to look. So play around with it. Um, don't feel like it has to be exact or specific because it does not. The only tips I will give is make sure that your knots for the ends of your straps are facing the inside of your bag so that when it's complete, you can't see the ends of the strap from the outside of the bag. So here I think I'm done and I prematurely decided to tie the knot on, on the inside of the bag for the second side of the second end of the strap. And you'll notice here that once I'm done and I pulled the bag closed, I realized that it's a little too long for my taste when it, once the bag is closed. I prefer that the strap lines up with the bottom of the bag when it's completely closed. And so I'm gonna actually go back, untie this knot and cut it just a few inches and then I'll go back and retie it again. So again, like I mentioned earlier, this part is completely customizable. If you prefer a longer um, drawstring, you can leave it longer. Um, if you want it shorter, definitely play around with it, adjust it just to see what it looks like and then adjust as you go, trim it, adjust as you go. Just kidding, so I'm actually gonna adjust the length of these drawstrings a little later. My attention went back to the slider and so what I'm doing here is I move the slider up the length of our drawstring. I'm taking the tail that we left earlier and I'm going to make two stitches through the center of the slider piece making sure not to sew through the actual drawstring itself. 
I'm doing this because I want to make sure that when I'm sliding the drop the slider up and down the drawstring that it does not come off of the drawstring if I do not put these two stitches in place you'll be able to slide the slider portion off of the drawstring and we don't want that so I'm just making two stitches here through the center making sure to avoid the drawstring and then I'm going to weave my ends and uh, finish that off and then that part is complete. drawstring and then I am done. I promise you I am done this time. At this point, you just have to make your I-cord strap and then you're all done. We will be making a 13 inch I-cord strap and um, this part goes really quickly. I'm actually going to speed through this because we have used this technique now in multiple tutorials on this channel and I also have a det detailed tutorial on how to complete this technique. So what I want to do is put a link in the top right corner of this video but I'll also put a link in the description box as well so you can go check that out and if you need some additional guidance on how to complete this technique but it's really simple and um, I love it because it creates a very strong but somewhat stretchy handle and you can not only use it for purse handles I've also used it for lanyards and keychains yoga mat straps you name it it's an awesome technique so I highly recommend um, that you uh, go check out that tutorial and give it a whirl. It's, it's a really useful technique. So I'm going to speed through this and then I'll come back so we can put everything together and then you're all done. Completed your I cord, now it's time to put everything together. So you'll clip the lobster clasps to the D rings that we attach to the sides of our bag. And then, if you did purchase the an optional extra strap, you can attach that as well. 
and you'll be able to not only use this bag as a handbag, but you can use it also as a crossbody bag. This concludes our first tutorial of the year. I am super excited to see your finished objects, so definitely remember to tag me once you post your pictures. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to post them in the comments below, or you can message me on Instagram or on my website. Also, don't forget to check out the description box of this video as it contains information such as timestamps and the materials list. Thanks for watching today's video. Please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you also subscribe so you'll get real time notifications each time I post a new one. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye!